Our city is booming. People are moving here every day in search of affordable homes and great paying jobs. And over this last year, that's meant an increase in property values for homeowners everywhere. But there is another side to that story. This past year has been a tale of two cities. If you're a homeowner, you've enjoyed increased property values, more net worth due to the high migration of people to our province in search of affordable homes and high paying jobs. If you're a renter, you've experienced increased costs, less affordability and less job security. That's what makes this different from other years. It's not really a feel good story. On one hand, Canada is experiencing record migration and on another hand, we're also seeing record levels of people choosing to leave this country. Here in Calgary, we're in uncharted territory. And that's why in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at what's happened this past year in order to lead us to today and what we can expect to find in 2024. That's right, I'll be making predictions of where I believe the market will be 12 months from now. Just yesterday, I received the housing stats package for 2023 from the Calgary Real Estate Board. And as I unpacked it, it became clear that there is a general theme. Strong immigration, consistently low supply in the housing market led to a significant increase in housing prices. Now, I know many of you listening to that are going to think, that's insane. Like, how can people afford homes at these prices? Where are all these jobs that support this? Well, if you feel that way, you've got company. The Calgary Real Estate Board, they felt the exact same way at the beginning of last year. They looked at everything, they thought of the high interest rates, and they said, hey, you know what? By the end of 2023, housing will be roughly $526,000 for an average benchmark price. How wrong were they? Off by nearly 10%. It actually finished the year at $570,000. How's it possible that they got it so wrong? How could house prices increase so quickly at a time when it feels like no one can afford them? Well, the answer is deceivingly simple, supply and demand. So we might look at things like higher interest rates and lower job growth as a reason that housing prices should drop, but when the demand from immigration is so strong that it outpaces, those downward pressures, it's going to mean that pricing is still going to rise. So will that continue in 2024? Well, to get an answer to that, let's take a deeper look into what happened last year. If we take a broad view of the market, first thing that we'll see is that there was a slight decrease in sales year over year. 2022 was a banner year and 2023 was a little bit less, but still 27,614 sales. That is much higher than long-term trends and much higher than pre-pandemic levels. Although it's not detailed in the report, it's my personal opinion that the Calgary rental market actually helped support Calgary real estate prices last year. This is because rent actually increased 30% last year. And that means that many people were actually better off purchasing a home because it would have lower monthly costs than just paying that increased rent. Affordability is an issue that's on the minds of every Canadian. You can see it in news articles. You can definitely read it in the comment section below videos like this one. But people are concerned with the high cost of living. And that has had an impact on the Calgary real estate market. It has dampened demand to a certain degree. But it actually didn't kill it. It just shifted the demand of home buyers to more affordable products. So row housing and apartment style condos, they're the ones that experienced the greatest growth this past year. But once again, it was supply that drove the real estate market in 2023. In fact, here's a direct quote from the Calgary Real Estate Board. The year 2023 was marked by persistently low supply levels, averaging 44% below the 10 year average. Such a tight supply, especially for homes priced below $1 million, led to a market that heavily favored sellers, affecting pricing and availability. That is a quote saying that homes under a million dollars, the more affordable segment, are the ones that still move quickly. Now, if you're from Calgary, that doesn't feel affordable. But I want you to zoom out for a second and look at all of the Canadian real estate market. Relatively speaking, Calgary is still a bargain. However, in a recent article, the RBC analyst noted that Calgary is starting to lose a bit of its edge. It now takes 47.1% of a household's income just to service the debt on their mortgage. That's up 8% from just a year ago. Now that's not great news, but here's a direct quote from that article that outlines how Calgary compares with other cities. 
While the bar is rising for home ownership in the western city of Calgary, the already dire situation got worse for buyers last quarter in the Vancouver area, where the cost of owning a home reached an astounding 102.6% of income. In Toronto, affordability deteriorated to its worst level on record at 84.1%, with Victoria rounding out the top three at 76.1% after backtracking on improvement in the first and second quarters. And it's those kind of numbers that are driving more people to Calgary. In fact, let's take a look at the different areas and market segments here, just a brief overview so you get an understanding of where things are at. We saw a sales decline in the semi-detached, detached, and the row housing markets, but that was basically because there was just nothing for sale. And so in each one of those segments, we saw increases in price. We're now at almost $700,000 for a single family home here in Calgary. Now it's the apartment style condominium that was the real outlier in the data. In fact, this was the one segment that actually had more sales than the year prior and it impacted pricing by over 13%. It's also important to note that we've got three markets that are just outside of Calgary, Airdrie, Okotoks, and Cochrane. And many people choose those destinations because they're a little bit more affordable than living right in Calgary. And each of those areas obviously also performed very, very well. Because of their affordability, it kept market conditions very, very tight, and it meant an increase in housing value as well. Now that we understand what drove prices in 2023, we can start to look at what might happen next year. I'd like to ask you three questions to see if we can figure this out together. The first one is immigration. Will we continue to see high immigration in 2024? Well, based on the unaffordability of other housing markets and based on the high immigration into Canada, I still believe that that is gonna create that same strong demand, that same market force that drove us last year is gonna carry us right through this year. So the next question is, are we going to see an increase in inventory to meet the needs of that demand? Well, the truth is, I don't think so. You see, there's a long lag time between getting building permits and organizing trades, which are really hard to find these days, and then building properties all just to meet the demands of today. So that could take a year or two. Well, the other way that demand could be met is if more homeowners decided to sell their properties and maybe move into another property. But in reality, that's sort of a net neutral gain. They sell one, they take another, and oftentimes people aren't bringing those properties to the market because they're worried that there's nothing else out there that might meet their needs. So it's for those reasons that I just don't see inventory coming back to the market at a pace that's going to be able to offset those high demands. And the final question is what's going to happen to interest rates? What do you think? Everything that I'm reading is telling me that we're at the peak for interest rates. The Bank of Canada does not appear to have any appetite to increase interest rates in 2024. In fact, most analysts are betting on anywhere from three to five cuts next year. Now, what will happen if interest rates actually lower? This is what scares me about the 2024 real estate market, is that so many people are going to sit on the sidelines and wait for properties to drop. And I don't believe it's gonna happen. So many people are waiting for a situation or a time where it feels more fair. So many people are looking at the price of everything and saying that the Canadian real estate market is a house of cards just waiting to fall down. But is that true? Look, I don't have all the answers, but I do see one thing to be true. People who aren't paying attention right now are heading into a perfect storm. Immigration is likely to continue. That demand will likely stay high. Interest rates are either going to stay where they're at, increase just a touch, or likely come down significantly, inflating the price of all assets. And so if interest rates do fall, and I believe they will and I think they should, it will likely mean that there'll be even more people chasing those few homes that come to market. So I predict prices are going to go up. I'm actually in agreement with the Calgary Real Estate Board that's saying 10%. However, I'd only add in this, I'd be surprised if it isn't much more than that. I know many people have looked at this situation and felt like they'll never be able to afford real estate, but if it is important to you, and I think it should be because it is so vital to the financial futures for so many families. There are steps that you can take today to start setting yourself up for that future. Whether it's saving a little bit each month towards that down payment, 
or setting up a financial plan or having a safety net in place for when something comes along and surprises you. Maybe it's as simple as getting your credit rating in good status because that will make such an impact on the mortgage terms that you will get when you are ready. But my message to you is don't give up. And when the time is right, don't feel pressured. Don't let FOMO, family, friends, some doomsayer YouTuber or some realtor convince you to buy at a time that it's not quite right for you. Now I understand for some of you, it's gonna be hard to listen to a realtor on YouTube because you might be thinking, Brad, you just want me to sell my home right now or you want me to buy a home right now, you want me to take some action, but the truth is I actually don't. In fact, for some of you, now would be a terrible time to buy. If you're gonna be house poor, if you have job insecurity, I implore you, please do not let FOMO drive you to make some poor financial decision. If you have a strong financial position, if you have a great job, and if you have the means, don't let that stop you from buying in a market like this. Everyone's situation is different, it's individual. And so if you'd like to explore yours a little bit more, we actually have a Calendly link in the description below where you can book a time as a home buyer or a home seller to get a no pressure consultation absolutely free of charge where we look at your situation and help you decide if now could be the right time. Now we've got a ton of more great content on this channel, so we've got a playlist right here if you wanna check it out. And if you never wanna miss another video, or if you wanna just check back in a year from now and give me heck for missing on my prediction, just subscribe.